Howdy folks and welcome to this episode of Michael's Backyard Marina. I've been I've got a tool I created. Uh, other people have done it. This is nothing new, but I'm gonna show you how I did it. How to pressure test your gearbox. I finally just broke down and decided I need to have a way to pressure test gearboxes. Uh, primarily because if you do drain the oil out of it and you do see water in it, uh, you gotta figure out what which one of these seals are leaking. Um, chances are they're both the same age, but some of them have a little more abuse, subject to a little more abuse than others. The prop one, for example, a seal around the prop can have fishing line get around it, and that can eat up your seal and cause that one to fail. This one up here can just fail from just age, uh, age in general. Uh, now you can do it, there's one or two ways, there's two ways you can test this thing, and I'm, I'm guessing you probably should check both ways. One would be putting a vacuum on it, and I've seen people put a vacuum on it and pull up, pull 10 pounds of vacuum on there and uh, see if it holds for 30 seconds. If the vacuum holds for 30 seconds, the vacuum holds, chances are you won't have any, any leaks. Now, the question would be, if the vacuum doesn't hold, you still gotta find that leak, right? Because it did leak down. Since it did leak down, now you gotta, you gotta discover which seal's leaking. Is it your shift shaft seal? Is it your prop seal? Is it in your input shaft, drive shaft seal? You don't know. So I'm gonna just forego the vacuum test and just do the pressure test and see what it see if it'll hold the pressure or not hold the pressure, but see if there's any leaks. So I'm gonna show you what I created to do it. You guys can make your own judgment calls as to how you would want to do it, but I'm gonna show you my way. There's multiple ways to do it. I'm gonna show you the way I did it, the way I decided to do it. Let's go over to the bench and show you what I built. Now this is as simple as it gets, these two pieces right here. Now I'm going to show you what the pieces are and what they represent. First of all, I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to show you this piece. It's just a piece of half inch transmission line. The uh, reason I picked half inch, I'll show you. Let me back this off real quick. All this is, <laughs> some of you might recognize this. Piece of trash in there. Um, it's just a socket head cap screw. Just your standard socket head cap screw with one minor, mo minor modification. I put a hole in it. See that hole? There's a hole clear through it. Why? Because I need to have air pass through it. Second modification I did was a nut. Just a standard nut, but the end of it's turned down. Why? Because where this goes up into the, into the gearbox, the hex won't fit, a round head does, so I turned it down. So all I'm doing here is putting the nut on there so I don't have to use the whole bolt. And then I'm putting, I got a little O-ring here. I'm not sure if you need the O-ring or not, but I'm just doing it. And then I've got the gasket that you use for sealing off uh, your plug. I'll just put one of those on here. And it creates that assembly. Then I'll slide this right back up into this hose and tighten it down. Now we're not dealing with a lot of pressure here. 10 pounds. 10 pounds. I'm going to put it up on the screen. 10 pounds. That's all you want to put to these things. You start putting a lot of pressure on these and you'll blow the seals out and you got to fix it anyway. So that's that assembly. This is just a quick connect for a standard air hose. Uh, what I use in my shop. I have a separate one here. I'll show you what I'm going to use that one for. Then I have a pressure regulator. And all this does is regulate the pressure that comes out the other side. You can put line pressure in this way, 90 to 120 pounds, whatever it is, and it regulates how much flow is gonna come out this side. Let me show you how it works. So when you put pressure on it like this, that's static pressure, nothing's flowing through it, right? And you can see, I can sit here and turn this up and down to wherever I want it to be. Now you see when I turn it back down, how it doesn't bleed off because you don't have anything to bleed it off with. Because normally these are used on things that are air is passing through it. So what I'm going to do is I'll put this so it's passing through and I can relieve it. But see right there, there's 10 pounds. So I can turn that down to almost nothing. And I can turn it up till I get about 10 pounds. As you can see, that's flowing. And when it gets resistance, I can stop it easily with my thumb. Turn it down just a little bit right there. And then I can lock it in so that doesn't move on me by accident. So with that being on there, now I can actually screw this into the gearbox. 
Then I can plug this on there. As you can see, it would actually flow through there and put pressure in the gearbox. And I'll show you why you need to do that. Now what I'm gonna do here is go ahead and thread that bolt in. Get it turned in about four or five threads like that. And once I got it up there tight, it's not, this doesn't have to be tight. So tight the water runs out, guys. It's just gotta be snug. And then I'll just give it a little, little turn like that. Now that should be locked in to the point where it is not gonna leak. Now that I've got my gauge set, I can just plug it right in. Let's just take a look at this one right here. What you're gonna do is take your soapy water and we're just gonna spray it around here. Look at that. If this was leaking, you'd see bubbles just boiling up out of there under 10 pounds of pressure. So our drive shaft seal is good. Next one we're gonna check is this shift shaft seal. No bubbles. So far we're two out of three. Now we're gonna spray this around this shaft seal here and back up in here to make sure all the O-rings and everything. And I don't know if you guys ever had a leaky tire that you've done the soap test with before. And if you've got a leak, this would blow bubbles like a madman here. So what that tells me is we got a real good gearbox here. She's, she's tight as can be. Now we can take the pressure off of it. Well, now we can remove the gauge off of here. And we can back this off. Now one thing I want to show you that I found when I was removing this uh, plug, this had, somebody had double stacked a gasket on this plug and look what happened to that plug, that gasket. See that misshape in there? I'm surprised this didn't leak water or oil, gear oil. It could have very easily, but thankfully it did not and the gear oil did look really good. So now we can put our, we can top off our gearbox with oil now, and we can put uh, uh, the plugs in with confidence that these seals are in great shape. Now I just took that one gasket out of the upper one here. As you can see, it was looking pretty tough. So it's always nice to keep a couple spare of these around. There's nothing worse than that stopping your progress on getting your outboard back on the water just because you don't have a 88 cent gasket or whatever these things cost. They're not that expensive. Buy them by the pack of five or 10 or whatnot. So let's go ahead and fill this thing back up with gear oil. Alrighty, that's the oils topped off, gear oils back in it, pressure tested. This thing's ready to go back together. We can put the prop back on, put the water pump back on, and re reinstall this back to the motor. And uh, know that we can have a re reasonably good uh, confidence that this thing's going to run a while yet uh, because it's she's pressure tested and she's holding butt. That also doesn't mean you don't go out there the first hour and wrap yourself to 100 yards with somebody else's fish line around your, behind your prop and it gets that back behind here and just eats this seal up. Because there is a, there's a washer that goes here, but there's just enough space behind it that fish line can wrap around. And that just works like a grinding wheel on your uh, seal. And then it's toast. Now I'm going to give you a little rundown on some prices here. This regulator I picked up at Napa. They should start giving me a discount as much time as I uh, uh, spend talking about them on my videos here and there. 
for for not being an outboard motor company, they do have a lot of stuff I can use on outboards, I like fuel line and stuff like that. But uh, anyway, it's like fifty four dollars for this regulator. It's a really nice regulator. Uh, chances are you can probably get them for cheaper somewhere. This is an aluminum bodied one. They do have them made out of plastic. Uh, this one can handle up to two hundred fifty psi. And then two of these fittings were like seven bucks for a pair. I think seven or eight dollars a pair. So we're up to 54 plus 8, 62. Uh, another piece like this, so another $3.65. Gosh, it can't be, let's call it a dollar or the dollars worth of hose, 66, 67, 68, if those were a dollar a piece, and then this modified bolt. So call it $70, and you got yourself a little pressure tester. Now, what I'm gonna do going forward is uh, all these. This is uh, off of a 35 horse Evan Rude is uh, no Johnson 35 horse Johnson is what this was tested testing the gearbox on uh, the ones on the Mercury's and some of the smaller Johnson's I think they're a smaller thread maybe I don't I don't want to speak out of turn here but uh, what I'll end up doing is I'll end up making up a couple more hoses like this that's why I've got some extra ends not like this end but. I'll get some, oh, the hose barb in here. Yeah, let's call it 70 bucks then. I forgot about the half inch hose barb with a uh, pipe thread on the end to put this fitting on. Anyway, I'm gonna make several different sizes. So I have one and I'll label this one for um, for Johnson's and Evernews of this size, this gearbox size. Smaller gearboxes have smaller threads. The other thing I've seen people use, and it would probably work just fine on here, you can adapt it to it. You've seen the, uh, the pump, the oil pumps that you pump the oil back in with, those have some threads and thread adapters. I've seen those flying around. Those aren't very expensive at all to get that adapter piece, but you still want to regulate it. You, you definitely don't want to put too much, too much pressure in there and turn your seals inside out. That would be bad. So anyway, that's, that's the breakdown of these pieces. And this transmission line is ridiculous because uh, you could probably use about any hose. You could almost, you could use anything that had a, that hold air because 10 pounds 10 pounds isn't anything um this stuff here is actually rated to hold 400 psi it's for uh trans automatic transmission line so it holds a lot more pressure anyway uh that's the long and the short of that well folks that was a real simple simple demo take two well folks that was a real simple demonstration of how to pressure test your gearbox on your outboard motor. This test will work on a multitude of outboards, anything that has a gearbox like, like this. And uh, like you saw on that on this one here that I just showed you, you have to pull the water pump off. You gotta pull that water pump off and that impeller and that plate off so you can see that seal. Otherwise you can't squirt soapy water on it to see the bubbles. The fact that I saw no bubbles, that's super duper. But anyway, very simple to create. Very rewarding to have. Now I, I can check other gearboxes that I've, for instance, I've set, had several gearboxes that I have drained. Water has come out, not a lot of water, some water, just a little, like a teaspoon of water came out and then the oil came out, you know, cause it's been sitting up right. Oil floats on top of water, water's down the bottom. That comes out first. Chances are that's not condensation. It got in somehow, but a lot of times what I've been doing is I'll run it, uh, put fresh oil in it, run it, run it in the tank, run it at the lake for several hours, and then I'll bring it back home and let it sit upright and settle out for, I don't know, a week, and then pull that plug out and drain it. Oil's, oil's not cheap, but these smaller outboards don't use that much. You know, most of these little nine horses maybe use a third of a quart, and so you can change oil out three times in a quart. I use this uh, uh, relatively expensive oil. It's, I think, 13 or $14 a quart, something like that. Uh, but it's a high grade oil. It, it can be emulsified in water up to 10% and not lose its lubricity or its lubricating properties, which is key. Cause the last thing you want to do is have a water leak start and then not catch it in time for some stupid reason. And you're taking out your gearbox. Now you've just spent hundreds of dollars, hundreds of dollars. Could be thousands depending on what type of uh, gearbox we're talking here. But uh, I find this is, uh, this is, when I run into that situation again, I'm gonna have a lot more confidence when I pressure test these to know that it was condensation or something, not sure what happened. You know, it could just be the plug, the seal on the plug for some reason, let water get in for whatever reason, you don't know. And uh, 
but that way I'll know when I pressure test it that I know all the seals are good, or if it does have a bad seal, or two, or three, I'll know which ones to go after. Because the worst thing is to have a have vacuum tested, for instance, or have water in there, and not know which seal you need to replace. So if you don't know which one to replace, what are you gonna do without testing? You gotta basically replace all three to know you get it. This here will assure you that, when, especially when you put in new seals, if you put in brand new seals, did you get it in properly? Did it get seated properly? Is it sealing off on the shaft properly? All you gotta do after you put your new seals in, pressure test it once again with the soapy water test in the pressure. Keep in mind, I want to say this again, 10 pounds max. Don't put over 10 pounds in there. Uh, anyway, I forgot what I was gonna say. A loss of words? This guy? I don't know how that happened. But anyway, hope this was a good tech tip and trick for you guys to, to create your own tool instead of going out and running out and buying a, a super fancy dancy tool. Somebody, some people might say this is expensive. Not compared to a gearbox. Not knowing that you've got confidence that that thing is sealed up. And uh, it's a lot of peace of mind. It's a cheap price to pay for peace of mind. You'll go out and spend $100, $200 on a rod and reel but you won't spend 60, 70 bucks on something that could prevent you from not going fishing? Think about that for a minute. You can't go out there in the water if that gearbox is locked up. No, you cannot. I mean, you can, it's just not as fun. You know that. Hearing the sweet sound of a motor running, it's always a sweet thing to do when you're out there outboarding, boating, and having fun. All right, folks, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you found it helpful and useful. If you like what you see or you found it helpful, hit that thumbs up for me if you would. I appreciate it so much. If you like the channel and like what you've seen more of my content, subscribe. You'll get notified every time I drop another video. Hit that notification bell and it'll definitely let you know. But uh, until the next video, you guys stay safe out there, have some fun, and I'll see you on the next video. This is Michael and I'm out.